In chapter 3, we're going to talk about bonding and specifically ionic bonding. But first in part 3.1, I'm going to give you a slight introduction to what bonding is all about. So bonding is basically where we take two atoms and we combine those together to form a stable compound. So when, when we put them together, they're going to stay together. Elements will either gain, lose, or share electrons in order to reach that stability. And so it depends on what type of elements we're talking about when we use that. But they're all going to try to achieve what's called the electron configuration of noble gases, which is, if you recall, the octet rule, where elements like to achieve eight electrons in order to be stable. That's why they form certain ion charges, and that's also how they're going to combine together. There are two different kinds of bonding. There's ionic bonding, which is formed from ions, and then there's covalent bonding. And in ionic bonding, there is a transfer of electrons so that one of those, one of those elements becomes positive and one of those will become negative, and that opposite attract rule is going to um, cause them to stay together. In a, a covalent bonding situation, they're actually going to share their electrons so they don't actually form a charge, and then they will both feel like they own those electrons. In an ionic bond, you're going to have a bond between a metal and a nonmetal. And remember, the metal is to the left of that jagged line on the periodic table. And a nonmetal is to the right of that jagged line. And so you're going to have a metal lose an electron to form a positive, And you're going to have a nonmetal gain that electron or more electrons than one uh, in order to form a negative charge. And the example here is sodium and chlorine gas. And so sodium in A and chlorine gas, which is Cl, are going to combine to form sodium chloride. Interesting that sodium metal is act, will actually explode if you throw it in water. Chlorine gas, which exists as Cl2, will actually kill you if you breathe it in. And then they react to form sodium chloride, which also, also is known, if you recall, as table salt. And that's actually something you can consume. So how these things arrange is very important in what type of compound they um, become. Covalent bonds are going to form from sharing of two nonmetals. And so when those two nonmetals combine, or it could be metalloids, uh, those metal, that we call that a molecule. A molecule is a compound that's, that's formed from covalent compounds. Uh, elements, sorry. Uh, molecule is a compound formed from elements that were nonmetals to begin with. They are together with a covalent bond, which means that they share electrons. We will talk more about covalent bonds and molecules in chapter four. The rest of chapter three is going to be about um, our um, ionic bonding. So just to recap for you a little bit, Ionic bonding is going to be between a metal and a nonmetal. And they are going to transfer electrons so that the metal has a positive charge and the nonmetal has a negative charge. The covalent bonding is going to be be between two nonmetals. Uh, I keep hitting that button. Sorry about that. It's going to be between two nonmetals, and they are going to share electrons. And so you're not going to see charges. Okay? 